everyone <laughs> as you can see today I'm going to talk you through how to do a skull makeup oh my god I'm demolishing everything um what I'm going to talk through today is some techniques for um the body art element okay so one of your first assessments is to be able to produce a body art and um, I've chosen something really difficult um in a skulls galore what I'm going to do though is do I've done this side a little bit okay because they're quite time consuming and I want to talk through it really um, and sort of finish off some little bits this side though I'm going to do more like a sugar skull um, a simpler but effective um, look and what I'll do is I'll do that one um, and I'll finish off with a time lapse but I want to just talk through some of the um, products that you'll need um, and some of the techniques that you can use as well um, so the first thing to do really is to map out what you want to do the key thing first of all for skulls and the most important thing is to make sure that you have got reference pictures um, that's really important so you really want proper skull pictures you can look at makeup which has been done from other artists how they've interpreted a skull but really to make your looks innovative um, looking into different styles of skull whether it's skull diagrams whether it's um, actual physical skulls that you found pictures of um, you know any different styles um, need to be researched for this one okay then what you can do is start experimenting with the creative elements of the skull work so start thinking about sugar skulls think about how you can jazz this up and make it look prettier um, you can add lots of different things to your look um, but it is the key to research okay once you've done all your research it's then your chance to do your design work um, and you cannot, and I repeat, cannot um, go ahead and do a look unless you've done it on paper first. If you can't do it on paper, you're not going to be able to do it on your face. It's a lot harder um, and skulls are really hard. So you have to think wisely about what you're going to actually do and what type of skull you're going to use as well. This one was the face and body art. Um, uh, assessment so you do have to do something on the body okay only has to be upper sort of half of the body maybe down the arms or something as well um, but the key thing obviously for a skull is the face so um, I'm going to talk through those elements so the first thing I'm going to talk through um, is how to get good strength for a large area of coverage so particularly around the body area if I want to get quite a lot of colour maybe even blend in some colours or something and um, I would use um, I mean you could use a sponge I haven't got a sponge um, but my favourite tool anyway is either a kabuki brush which is the really dense thick and um, stubby um, stippling brushes that you can get this one's just a normal foundation brush it's actually a really cheap one I got off eBay um, but it's quite dense and um, it's not soft it's quite dense um, and it's used for a stippling sort of action so I'm just going to show you a little bit um, I've done something here um, so I'm just going to show you how effective that can be so what you need on your um, products and tools so once you've done your design you then just need to decide what products and tools you're going to need you will need water based products okay they're the best to really use because they dry to a powder and you can use other products over the top of those so I've got water based colours I've got my eyeshadow palette and I've got a, um, a cream based product, I've got pigments and I've got glitters as well. Um, so I've got an assortment of those. I've got an assortment of brushes as well, I've got fine detail on brushes, I've got brushes like this one which is like a petal brush, um, I've got the stumpy um, blend and brushes um, etc another thing that you will need is a white pencil okay so you will need to map out the areas what you want to fill in first and the key thing to remember about um, face painting and body art 
is when you start doing your makeup, it looks like nothing. You have to persist with it. You have to, this is where you have to have a bit of stamina um, and you do need to, um, sorry, I'm just adjusting the camera. You do need to think about um, the whole process, okay? And you have to pretend that's gonna look fabulous in the end, okay? I mean, this isn't done in, in no long shot, okay? Um, I've still got to do that, but it's so time consuming that I'll do it as a time lapse. But I just want to talk through some of the procedures. So I've got my wall base colours, I've got my pencil, I've got my shadows, I've got my pigments. What you need then is uh, two bowls of water, one for light colours, one for dark colours. I always have a spray bottle as well. So if you've got like one of the spritzer bottles, um, use one of those. Um, and say, I'm gonna be quite brave, I'm gonna go straight for black. Okay, so black is sometimes one of the hardest colours to sort of get a, a good pigment on. So as you can see, there's no droppage of water. I've just sprayed that. I'm going to mix to a paste, probably just put one more spray in there. Mix that to a paste. All right. And then when you apply, you get a really strong base. This is really good effect. So as you can see, I'm not dragging the brush because if you drag the brush, you get a wishy-washy look. I'm stippling this product on. Okay, and the good thing about this as well is you can gently ease off the pressure so you get a softer finish around the edges if that's what you wanted. Um, and we're gonna go from there. All right, so that's my black. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to use, if I can find my brush, um, this one will do. I'm going to use um, a bit of purple. Okay, so electric purple, so that's quite nice. Okay, I'm going to maybe do a bit of a galaxy look. Okay, and I'm going to start applying this in the same way, so with a stipple and sponge. And I'm just going to soften it. And you wouldn't think you'd be able to see that over the black. I hope you can see that. It blends really nicely, okay? If the more you do with this, because the product on the brush is wet, um, that product is mixed in with the black. And you just get a hint of the purple tinge around the edges, okay? So this is how you can get your um, faded out effect. Okay, what colour should I use next? I think I'll go for a light blue next. Okay, this is just to show you how you can blend the colours together and how to do a gradient. Okay, so you've got blue here. Okay, I'm going to use a dry part of the brush because this is such a light colour in comparison to black. I'm going to use a dry part of the brush and I'm going to pat with the dry until that's softened. So as you can see, you've got really dark colours which are really hard to blend together, okay, so it's why I want to choose. And I'm going to use dark colours today, so that's why I've used dark. Um, and you get a really clean, smooth, even finish with that. Okay, so that's the first tool which I would recommend. These stumpy foundation buffing brushes that you'd use for blushes, for powdering and for foundation application. Okay. The next thing um, I would recommend um, is a square tipped brush. Okay, so you can get different sizes. Um, I've got these ones here. Um, I've even got this one here. Um, so you can use those. I've even got a really small squared tip brush as well. Okay, so these are really good for if you want to do, what can I use? Let's go for indigo. So if you want to go around um, and you want to use, I don't know, what, what can I use actually? I'll you go for a black actually. Okay, so if I wanted to fill in under here, okay, so I'll stipple that on, but then I'll go around the edges and I'll use the flat of the brush. So I use the edge of the brush to do my work for me and I work that up until I get a crisp finish at the edge. Okay, so that's really good for finishing off. Um, it's really good to getting in um, and using the 
tip, so I use the flat of the brush, so I use a flat like this, okay, to get the edge in. Okay, so you can see how precise that can become if you want it to. I hope you can see all this. Um, or you can, to get fine detailing, you can use the very top tip of the brush as well, and you'll get a nice sort of feathered line as well. Okay, and if you want to add a bit of shading, okay, these are really good, and you can do like a feathering effect. Okay, so you can just drag the colour down using the tip of the brush, and you get a nice feathered blend in there. Okay, so that's that one brush. Then you've got this fine detail brush, so I might as well go around, I don't know, my lips again or something. Um, I'll go around the teeth. Okay, so what we could do now is you can start, or oh, maybe I could do this bit, maybe make that. So this is designed just to use the very tip, all right, just to make that look a little bit more even. And you kind of let that get sort of work for you. So when you're using it, um, this one's quite a long um, brush um, and what you want to do is just lay the product down and drag okay so then you've got that and the less pressure you put on the finer line so have a little practice doing that so that's quite a thick one um, and then if I really want a fine line just really gentle um, and work that across okay Okay, so it's getting really fine now. So you can add little different pressures. Um, if you want to do like, I don't know, tiger stripes or something, you could press down on these, twist the brush, and then use the tip. Okay, so if you want to do, I don't know, some leopard print spots. Okay, you could use that for this. Okay, so it's all about how you use the brush and how much pressure you put on it as well. Um, one little tip is you can do um, what we call double dip flowers. Okay, so I'm probably going to do some petals around on um, this side. Okay, which is going to be my sugar skull. So you get your first colour. So I'm going to have a predominantly pink flower. Okay, and you want to load this whole brush up. Once again, you can see no water in my cake. Okay, so I'm going to mix that up and load my brush up as much as I can. Then I'm going to just get a wipe. I'm going to dip the tip in some water, just the very tip. Then I'm going to take some of that product off the end. Okay, so I'm going to get my um, wipe. I'm just going to take off as much of that as I can. Okay. So most of the brush is actually full with paint. And then I'm going to use a bit of white as my tip. So I've got dark pink and I've got light pink. Okay, so I'm just going to do it on here. I can always remove it. So you're using this brush, which is what you get in your kits, and it's called a petal brush. Okay, you can get them just from art supply stores, um, but they're quite quite dense, but to a point. Okay, you get different sizes as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lay that down. And then I've got some cute little petals okay so that's another technique you could have a little practice with so if I want to do like a flower um, I could do that round okay um, and then I can't actually see what I'm doing. Or maybe I could just sort of go round and pick up any little bits that I needed to pick up on. 
Which of our only glasses getting old now. Okay, and then in the middle, I might use a bit of purple, a bit of purple, a bit of yellow. Um, if I get this in here, okay, you can do some little dots. You can sort of come off as well from those as well. All right, so that kind of gives you an idea, but I'm going to just remove that because I don't really want that. I might keep the petals, I don't know. Um, I might just bring them around just a little bit more. Although it's now starting to run out. Okay, um, so that's your petals. Um, so really, that's kind of um, all we kind of need to know really. So use your buff and brush. Um, use your square tip brushes and your fine detail and brushes and then you can use your petal brushes as well for sort of like little decoration as well all right so they're the main key things that we would need to use when it comes to doing um, the face paint as I said you need to map out where you want to put the bulk of your work I like to start off by adding all my highlight first so where my lightest parts and where the bits need to come out then what I do is just gently go around my edges with my fine liner and my black and I tend to go around all the parts, I don't fill it in, I just make sure I'm happy with it, I look in the mirror um, and then I go from there. Okay, so I kind of do that. Um, but the glory with this is you would just fill in all your makeup with the face paints, okay, so you make them nice and strong. okay and the key for some of these things is a little bit of shade okay so I fill in my depth so all the bits I want to look like they have disappeared and they're sunken um, I need to put that as pure black okay then what you can use is on a shadow okay so if there's any shade and or any delicate areas that you want to look quite soft you can use face paints but I would recommend that you use um, eyeshadow definitely sorry I just need to get a brush so what you can do if I use like um, a soft brown sort of colour okay the areas that I want to sort of bring out with a bit of shading I'm going to use this brush to make it look like it's coming out a little bit now particularly here because I want this bone to look like it's coming out, okay, so this bone's coming out and this one's sort of sitting underneath it, you need to add a bit of soft shading here as well. Okay, so that's quite important. The other place I'd go first of all, I would use eyeshadow to map out where you're going to put your teeth. It gives that nice sort of blend underneath, okay. I've kind of done mine a little bit handed because uh, I want to use this as a demo. Okay, so I'm keeping that nice and soft here. And my cat's not going to come in. I bet that comes in. He wants to be part of the film. I do apologise if he does. Just keep, just keep with me. Okay, so I'm just going to keep working that down. Okay, so you use your eyeshadows. And um, one thing I like to do is to add a bit of depth and add a bit of sparkle and add a bit of shape. I tend to use a bit of eyeshadow, so I'm going to use, like, I hope you can see that, a bit of blue in here. I'm also going to use a bit of my purple I've got here. I'm just going to use that. So then you're using blending techniques as well, okay? So they're looking really nice. I'm going to add a bit more of a brighter pink in the centre. Alright, so you can use that. Just adds a little bit more interest to your design. Okay, same with the eyes. Um, I'm going to use those. Okay, so I'm going to use that. And the same on the nose as well. Alright, so as you can see, it got a bit of a pearliness to it. Um, I'm even going to go in around the sides. I just think it makes it look a little bit more interesting. 
I'm not a massive fan of the original skulls. I prefer the more creative sort of sugar skulls, to be fair. But I think if you can do a skull makeup, you can do any makeup, okay? So it's a really good one for you to practice your skill sets and really sort of stretch and challenge you as well. So you can use your eyeshadows as well. Another product which you can use if you want to get a bit of strength, okay? But bearing in mind this doesn't dry, okay? It's a cream based product, all right? So what you might want to do is add, let me just see if I can find a bit, let me just see if I can find a bit of brush. Bear with me. I have to use this one okay so if I want the teeth to stand out a bit more okay I'll use a bit of cream use it very sparingly okay okay so I'm going to use this as my main highlight Okay, so then I do a little bit more highlight on here as well. So if I want any little bits to sort of stand out. Okay, I'll use the cream to do that. But because, once again, it doesn't dry, okay, I need to emphasise that a lot, um, you have to be careful because it can smudge um, and it can ruin a design if you're not careful okay um, I'm going to add a bit more highlight around my eye too okay so it's kind of coming on I'm probably starting to do too much of it now um, so yeah, I'm going to do a time lapse now. Um, I'm going to do sugar style this side. I'm going to do my body on here. So if I just do a little bit more on my body. So this bit's all got to be black. So I'm going to bring that all out. I'm going to make sure I use my big sponge here. I'm going to bring that all the way around and obviously it's really important that you take photos as you go as well because you want to check that you can't see when you're taking a photo um, any skin okay so you need to make sure you're bringing it back far enough for a body paint to be photographed okay if it's not necessary to paint the whole thing don't okay just make it look good for the photos defo okay um so this is a prime example so we've got this here okay so that's done the bulk of it it's nice and quick you saw how quick that was okay and then I'm gonna get my edges neat okay I need a bit more water on that And I'm just going to work that across using the flat of my brush. Okay, once again, flat of my brush. I'm going to work that long. Okay, um, I might as well just do this bit as well. Okay, and then what I want to do is get my eyeshadow again. And I want to make it a little bit more snazzy. I'm going to use my blue in here. I'm going to add it just to bring that out. I'm using the Stacey Marie Carnival palette, and I do love the pigments in that. Um, oh, whoops doesn't matter if you make a mistake as I just assure you 
you can just wipe it away the water soluble paints just get a cotton bud or something and just clean that away okay i don't know if you can see my, hear my husband and my son talking about dieting which, which we'll all need to go on after this lockdown <laughs> Okay, and then I might even add a bit of green into this as well. Okay, so they're just going to just blend all that in. So just add a little bit more interest into that rather than it being black, okay. One thing I will probably do is use bits of glitter as well. So I might actually add in. Glitter. And make myself a sparkly skull because I don't want no boring old skull. All right, um, so yeah, you just keep working on that. I missed out my little nose, let me pop a little bit on my nose. There, all right, um, I'm just gonna keep going with that really, and I'm just gonna just finish this off. What I do need to do is my mouth. Okay, so you kind of get the gist. I'm going to do a time lapse now and finish that off. Um, I hope you found it useful. I hope you have lots of fun experimenting. Do your research, do your design, plan, plan, plan. And practice makes perfect, okay? Remembering it doesn't look like anything until you finish everything off, okay? Use that reference picture, make it as easy for yourself as possible. Okay. Preparation, organisation and knowledge are key. All right. Enjoy, have fun, be creative um, and inspire. Many thanks. Bye.